One of the best modifications I made to my CNC is adding a little vertical milling area. So basically it's just a hole cut in the CNC bed. I actually used the CNC to draw all the lines for it. So I knew it was a line to what it thought was straight. Um, and it just allows me to drop pieces vertically, just like this one. And it opened up a whole new world of possibilities of cutting joinery on the CNC. So when the Sane Smart company sent me a CNC to review, uh, I think this is one of their lower end models, the 4040 Reno. I didn't want to use it traditionally. Um, I actually had the idea of making a completely vertical joinery station out of it. And I think this would actually, for me, because I have a larger CNC, this would be the most useful thing. CNC is a really interesting concept for joinery because basically you're just designing all the joints on the computer. I designed most of my joints in Adobe Illustrator. Once you get the hang of it, it's actually a very intriguing way to do joinery and it's very predictable, it's very repeatable. Um, so I really wanted to, just to see how far I could push it. I only had a small sort of vertical area on my other CNC, and I thought I'd make a larger one on this, um, and uh, just to see what I could do with it. But first, before any of that, I had to do a little getting to know you project with the Gen Mitsu. The getting to know you project that I did was kind of, I think, what the intended purpose for this was. Um, basically, I just did a couple very rudimentary tests and then I moved on to cutting some acrylic with it. I coach a badminton class at a local high school and I had to actually make some little trophies for the badminton team. As soon as I moved on to cutting out the shapes of the acrylic, I promptly burned the uh, existing spindle that they sent. Um, I just straight up cooked it. So what I did right away is I had a Makita router, the 65 millimeter diameter router from Makita, which is very popular with CNC's, and I mounted that on the unit instead. The Makita router worked flawlessly, so I think that's a good combination. The existing 75 watt spindle that it comes with is really just a complete junk. Um, and you need to upgrade it almost immediately to a proper router, but it's not an expensive up upgrade at all. So over the last few days, I built this joinery station. It's basically just a big box. It's very hard to get this all in a photo, but you'll have to, uh, once you see some of the other angles, you'll get a picture of it. It's basically just a big box about the size of a mini fridge. Um, made it of MDF. There's T-tracks built into it for clamping vertical pieces on the surface. And basically I'm just gonna be clamping a vertical piece here and uh, finding the center of this piece and cutting a tenon on it. So that's what we'll see right now. I have this piece of SBF lumber milled and marked the center here and I've got it mounted vertically. When I was building this, I, I was extra careful to make sure everything was 90 and level to what the CNC knows as reality. So now I'm just gonna find the zero point right here in the center. I'm gonna center it here, zero all. So even with the machine cut, um, Tenon, still a little bit of woodworking to do afterwards. You might have to go in with the chisel and do some cleanup. Again, this is soft wood, so it's prone to tearing. Another thing I've noticed is it's already building so much static electricity. This is crazy. Um, and it's probably from the collection hose. I could just run a wire from here down to a grounding element to mitigate that. Now I'm setting up the mortise in easel and I basically just used the same file and the exact same shape um, and I'm changing it to cutting a pocket. Okay, for the connecting board, um, I've got this almost half inch piece of pine um, and I'm gonna find the center here and then I'm gonna cut the mortise into this. Uh, I'm gonna go straight through. So we're gonna do like a through 
tenon where the tenon pokes out. And then we can try and fancy it up a little bit. Okay, as suspected, the, the bottom edge is pretty clean. Look at the top edge, it's crazy. But again, this is, there's always a little woodworking after you cut something on the CNC. The main thing we're looking for here is that generally the architecture is correct. It was able to keep moving down in its passes in the same way, and it, it, it looks like it has. Okay, now we're just gonna take some sandpaper and clean up the tenon a little bit. I'm just gonna go in further with a chisel and uh, try and get this as clean as I can. Okay, so let's try it. I have no idea if this is gonna work. So off camera, I took a chisel and I just took a little bit off. Not in a very elegant way. I reseated the joint, a little bit of crap, whatever. It's this softwood, this is a little bit of a mess, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, it just basically shows the, the concept. It's, uh, it's perfectly 90, so that's good. The bed is aligned. Okay, so what could I have done differently with this joint? First of all, when I was cutting the matching mortise, I should have just left it on the bed, you know, all the zero positions good. And then I uh, test fitted the, the tenon to see if it was going in. And then I could have just easily adjusted and expanded. When you're, when you're expanding joints and tweaking joints, you're just doing it all through software and you can do it in a very fine way um, up down to 0.1 millim millimeter. So originally when I was thinking about this video, I kind of thought of this system as maybe a cheaper alternative to something like a panta router for joinery. And just let's game this out. The panta router system, if you want all the, the it's template based. So if you want all the templates and all the extras and all the stuff, it, is maybe 2000 Canadian, something like that. Um, this CNC is only about 450 bucks, something like that. Would, the link is in the description. So this and just, you know, some MDF and whatnot to make the, all the mounting stuff is a little bit cheaper. Another advantage is there's no templates. It's basically just all software based. Um, and you can, with a, with, a, with a router and a CNC, you can get very artistic and very, you know, with finer bits, you can do all kinds of really strange, unusual things that, um, and shapes and stuff that you would really never be able to do on the Pana, Pana router. I, I wish I had, I wish they had sent me the kind of slightly better, the pro version, which uh, this is like the Reno version, I think they've just made a cheaper version, this belt driven version. I think the lead screw driven version would have been a bit better uh, for this purposes. I think it's just a bit more solid and a bit more pro. I know from using a lead screw uh, driven CNC, it's just a lot more solid and experience. I could, I could hear it chugging a little bit. <sighs> I don't know, it's up to you. But again, this is just an idea um, of maybe just a different direction you could go if you want to get into more mechanical, more advanced joinery. I will continue to use this in the future. With this much real estate, this is much more real estate that I've created on my original CNC. So I could do theoretically, um, I have 15 inches of space here. I could do, I could set up um, the drawers and do all kinds of box joints, dovetails, uh, all kinds of interesting things. So I'm, I'm looking forward to playing around with this and seeing how far I can push it within the limits of this specific machine. Uh, and you'll have to stay tuned for that. Also stay tuned for, they sent me one of the rotary units and I've never done rotary carving on a CNC with a motor, you know, uh, NEMA controlled, rotary unit so uh, um, I'm, and I don't quite understand how it works but I'm looking forward to getting into that um, because I can finally start making um, rounded objects more effectively. Stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.